بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الذين يغضون أصواتهم عند رسول الله أولئك الذين امتحن الله قلوبهم للتقوى أولئك الذين امتحن الله قلوبهم للتقوى لهم مغفرة وأجر عظيم صدق الله العظيم Dear respected brothers and sisters who are listening, firstly, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The first thing and the most important thing is the niyyah and the intention. So, we're sitting here so that we can get close to Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah is the one that has set us in this world, in this time, whichever time you're living in, He's the one that decreed this. And Allah did that specifically. By planning who your parents are going to be, who your friends are going to be, which place you're going to live, which options you're going to have, which colleges are in front of you, which universities are there, which madrasas are there, who your teachers are going to be, what kind of company you will have, where you will sit down for your exams. Allah Azza wa Jal has written all of that. So now, the talk is about how to pass exams successfully. The first and foremost thing is, when you're going for a career, when you're going for, a, for an actual course, most important thing is, why am I doing this course? Honestly speaking, brothers, why am I doing this course? A lot of brothers don't ask this question. A lot of sisters don't ask this question. They get into it because the friend is doing it. It's the going thing. Everyone's doing it. I've got to jump on the bandwagon. What bandwagon are you jumping on? Are you jumping on Nuh alayhi salam's Safina, his ark? Or are you jumping on the Titanic? <coughs> what are you jumping on? Don't just jump on anything. That's, that's the biggest problem I find. You know, you know how many people have finished a degree and they don't actually work in that field of the degree? Why? Because they were given bad advice. Or they didn't know about what to do at the beginning. And this career advice they give you in these... They don't give it to you in the beginning, I'll be honest with you. I don't know what those guys do getting paid to give you career advice. But most people don't get it. And even if they get it, those guys sitting there saying, yeah, I think you're going to be a good electrician, whatever. How do you know that? <laughs> how do you know I'm going to be a good, good, you know, doctor, good this? I mean, how do you know that? They don't spend, you know, a, a good person giving you good advice will actually look into your skills. Go into your mind. Go into what you actually know, what you're good at. And look at your history. And apart from based on your history, not even just your history, but within yourself to dig out what you're actually good at. So that's the first and foremost thing. Well, anyway, you go into a course. The most important thing I want to say is your niya. What is your, what is your niya? What is your whole intention? Most brothers, I'll be honest with you, most sisters. What is your niya? I want to get a good job. Don't want to work in Tesco's. I don't want to work around the, in the, you know, around the corner. In my dad's shop. You know, what is your niya? Your niya is what? Just to get a good job? If you want to get a good job, you'll get your good job through this. What's your niya? I want to pass. I want to get a star. I want to get a first. Why? Because I just want to get a, F, a first. Why? Because I'm going to look good. I'm clever. I'm intelligent. I want to prove it. Well, you'll get it. You'll do it. I want to go to Imperial. I want to get to Cambridge. I want to get to this university, that university. I want to get to the top university for medicine. For, the, for what? The, what comes after that? If you ask most brothers, most sisters, they're going to say, I want to earn big bucks. <laughs> that's, that's where it's all going. If I get the good grades, then I get the good university. I get the good university, then I carry on doing and I get a first. Then I got selected out of all the people that were with me. I become the chosen person. And then I go to some big company and I do good. And they like me, I like them. And then hunky-dory, we live happily ever after. 
They give me nice checks at the end of the day, they fill my bank balance, I get a nice house, I settle down, you know, I get a nice wife, we have nice children, I educate them properly and bye bye to Brick Lane. <laughs> bye bye to Whitechapel. That's what people have got in their minds. And then what they want to do later on is that settle down, big house, five bedroom, this and that, alhamdulillah, I'm set for life. Two holidays a year, go and spend some money, come back again, work like a rat in a rat race. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. After that, basically, they go back out there. Two holidays, sunshine, plenty of things to see. Forget the fish, the birds as well, that are walking on the seaside, you know what I'm saying? Like, and they basically come back again, work again, go back out, come back again. And that's all they want. There's other people who want to get, what do they want? They want to do it because my dad's gonna go mad. My mom's gonna kill me. I'm not gonna get bath when I go home. <laughs> I mean, it's like, you know, I, I, I better do it because they're all after me. My brother, you know, my brother got a first, my sister got a first as well. Oh my God, I'm dead. If I don't get a first, then I'm dead. Then honestly, the, near, the intention is what? Just to, just to live up to the standard, live up to what the parents are saying, live, live up to what the society wants. My God, all my friends are going there. I have to, to be with them, I have to do it. I'm telling you, my brothers, my sisters, you've, if, you, if this is, most people, this is in their hearts. I'm telling you, please, if you haven't done so, renew your intention right now if you're in college or university. If you're in madrasa, renew your intention. You're not doing it for any of these people. You're not doing it for yourself. You're not doing it for your comfort. Because you're doing it because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it was his sunnah where he made the dua and he said, Allahumma inni as'aluka ilman nafi'ah. Oh Allah, I am asking you to give me a beneficial knowledge. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min ilmin la yanfa' wa min qalbin la yakhsha' Oh Allah, I seek refuge in you from a knowledge which will give me no benefit, from a heart which will have no fear of you. A heart which will have no fear of you. Wa min aynin la tadma' I'm, f I'm seeking refuge in you from an eye that does not shed tears. I'm seeking refuge in you from, dua in la yusma. from a dua that is not heard, not accepted by you. Wamin ha'ula il arba, and from all of these four. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said that beneficial knowledge is something that we seek. And that's why you're in university, that's why you're in college, because this is beneficial knowledge. You're going to study medicine, you're going to study engineering, you're going to study IT, and you're going to study whatever it is out there that is a halal thing, okay? And you're going to have good halal intentions to benefit who? You're going to first benefit yourself because there's nothing wrong in benefiting yourself in, an, in a good, nice way. That's fine, you get your money, you want to earn it, but that's not your real intention. You will, you will then be able to earn a livelihood for your family because Allah has ordered you to do it. Because Rasulullah told you to do it. Your family has a right over you, that's why you're going to do it as well. And not only that, the Muslim Ummah needs me to do this. That's what I want you to intend. But the Muslim Ummah needs me to be a good doctor. There should be good Muslim doctors. You want to be a doctor, Akhi? Brother, honestly, honestly speaking, you know, some, some, you, know you, you kind of see, see the stats, okay, of Muslims, Muslims in education. And now the Allah, you know, it's quite poor, you know, when you actually look at the stats compared to other religions, other backgrounds, aside. But what I want to say to you is, you want to be a doctor, be the best doctor. You want to be a, an IT consult, consultant, be the best one. Be the best business manager. Be the best person in the media, be the best person, whatever you're touching, be the best. That's what you should do. You want to go to madrasa, be the best alim. You want to be a hafiz, be the best hafiz of the Quran. That, that can actually stand there proud, that everyone is, wants to look at them and see, wow, subhanallah, how, how, what kind of person, mashallah, what kind of brother is this? Be the best, you know why? Because when you be a half of something, you're a danger to society. When you be a half, you're a danger. Imagine a doctor that never wanted to be a doctor. There are doctors who never wanted to be a doctor, but their dads wanted them to be doctors because it was the Indian thing. Every Indian father wanted his son to be a doctor, engineer, one or the other one. You got no third choice. <laughs> I beat you so hard, you go back to India. That's what they all wanted. So the guy had to become, can you imagine? You, are, you got a doctor, you say, you say, doctor, you know, I've got, I've got this problem. The doctor's got a problem himself. He doesn't want to see you. <laughs> <laughs> you know something? Honestly, I can imagine you go to a doctor, okay, and all he's seeing is dollars in his eyes. 
He don't care about you. You want to be a good doctor, have a heart as a good doctor. You know, love people for the sake of Allah. You have someone come to you with a sick heart, give the best you can. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you look in Sahih Muslim, there's a whole section to do with tib, which is to do with um, medicine. And Allahu Akbar, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you know when someone was ill, they were sick, he was one of the first to visit them. And when he visited them, subhanallah, and this is the sign of true ulama and true awliya of Allah on this earth today, is that when they know that you're hurt, they are hurt. That's a true doctor. Not only the physical thought, but you know, mentally they will be hurt just to see an insan, a human being being hurt. You want to be a, a, a person who's, who's in IT security, whatever it is, you be the best, okay? You be the best. Even an alim or a scholar of the deen or whatever you're studying, just do it so you become the best. The Muslim ummah is suffering because we've got people amongst ourselves who, not, who are not aiming high. Anyway, your niya is going to be all of this and above all, above all is, Oh Allah, and be honest with Allah. Oh Allah, when I be a good doctor, when I be a good consultant, when I be a good engineer, when I be a good builder. Honestly, we need honest Muslim builders. What do we need? Honest, there's only a few. Forget Muslim builders, other builders as well. <laughs> you know, there's only a few good builders and a good, good plumber. You know, plumbers, mashallah, they're very good. Yeah? Unless they basically muck up your house and then you find out, right? Then you find out, then you're in trouble. And don't start all this business, you know, when you go and you muck up someone's house and they say to you, you know, what have you done here? You go, I thought you're a Muslim, man. I told you, I'm a Muslim, you're a Muslim. Actually, you can't do this. Me, Muslim, man. You, Muslim, man. We get friends. Like, well, you just mucked up the guy's house and you're bringing Islam here now. What are you doing? Come on. You're in a trade. You're, in a, you're going for a trade. Put Allah first. Don't use all this Muslim business to try and get out of it. Anyway, you put Allah above that, Oh Allah, I'm going to be a good builder. I'm going to be a good technician. And when I do my job nice, whatever job it is, I hope to be what Rasulullah sallallahu said. Allah, what did Rasulullah sallallahu say? Riwaya Bukhari, my brothers and sisters. You're a businessman. You're a person who's got a profession. You're making some money. You're making some money and you are honest in your business. You are honest in your trade. On the day of judgment, you wake up and you are not like the ulama. You are not like the hufaz who read Quran all day. You are not like those ulama who preached all day on members. You are not like those musallis or those people who went to the masjid. Who went five times a day, but you were in your business and you were honest. And because of your honesty, just because of your honesty, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa says that you will be raised with the messengers on the day of judgment. Sahih hadith of Bukhari. Ma'al anbiya'i yawm al qiyamah. So that's what you look at. My profession, why? I'm going to be honest in my profession, whatever I've got. And I want to be raised with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and the Anbiya on the day of judgment. And I'm going to go straight, because whoever's raised with them, Allah Akbar, you're going straight to Jannah, bi'idnillah. You're going straight to Jannah. So anyway, that's what you want. You want Rida Allah. You want Allah's Ridwan. You want Allah to be pleased with you, whatever you do. And honestly, you know, when you be honest in your trade, listen, you go, you go and get a business. You go, you go and get a job somewhere. Yeah, you know, the first thing you don't want to do is go and trim your beard a little bit. What are you doing, sister? Basically, say, oh my God, my eyebrows are looking like a man. I better start, you know. <laughs> What are you doing? What do you think? Why are you doing? And then, you know, my, my scarf is looking, nah, I've got a better Calvin Klein scarf on. <laughs> pin it in. And the Akhi, he goes, first, mashallah, he had a nice beard. He was doing salah, he gets a job interview. He goes there and he's like this. <laughs> It's got a little beard. Why? Why do that? And then he's like, yeah, yeah, you know, I'll, I'll do it fine. I'll do this for you. I'll do that for you. And then he goes in the office. She gets in the office. And then others are looking. And then it's like, Salah time comes. Salah time comes. It's like, nah, man, the guy's gonna. It's my first day, you know. Allah forgive me, stuff, Allah stuff. <laughs> what they're gonna say? What they're gonna say? How are you doing? You got the job for Allah's sake. Then you put Allah first. You watch, honestly, Allah will look after you. Allah will look after your, your job. You don't care. Honestly, I will tell you one thing that I found in life myself. When you stick to your grounds, like the Sahaba, Subhanallah, they stuck to the grounds. They stuck to the grounds. They said, this is who we are. You want to accept us? Accept us like this. You don't want to accept us? 
You don't have my risk in your hand. My risk is not in your hand. Who's, whose hands is risk in brothers? Allah, Allah's name is Razzaq. He provides. So you, were, you think you're going to play games with me and in, your, in my business or in my little profession here, I'm an employee. You think you're going to play games with me and get me out and Allah's going to stop feeding me. The Allah that feeds me feeds you, my, my, my brother Henry. <laughs> and George. And whatever the name is. Allah feeds you, Allah feeds me the same thing. Subhanallah and Azim, Allah gives, Allah is Razak. He provides me, provides you. You can't stop anyone's risk. So don't fear. You know, Salah goes, Ramadan, this and that, and then they have a party Christmas time. So then they, they, they call you, you know, Mahanid, you come to the Christmas party? I think, uh, uh, actually, Jane, I'm a vegetarian. <laughs> okay, fine. But don't worry, Mohammed. You don't have to eat all that stuff. You know, but I don't drink. It's all right, Mohammed. It's all right. You can have orange juice. Yeah? So you go to the party, and the basically they're going to say, cheers with the, you know, castle main forex, you know, whatever. And you've got orange juice. <laughs> ding, ding. <laughs> what are you, you going to be around alcohol for? What, what are you going to do that? Tell them. Tell them. You know, tell them nicely. Don't, don't be rude. Tell them nicely. Say, look, that stuff is not good for you. They're going to say, oh, nice, all right. It's a, little, it's a little bit, Muhammad. Muhammad, it's a little bit. It's all right. Say, yeah, but that stuff's not good for you. Because when you, you don't know the limit, no one knows the limit when they're going to get drunk. Can you tell me when you're going to actually get drunk? Because when you have a little sip, I can take a little sip and say, I'm not drunk. Then you take a little sip and say, I'm not drunk. Then you take a bit more, take a bit more, say, I'm not drunk. <laughs> <laughs> and you're still looking and take another sip. Now, next thing you know, the guy's on top of you. <laughs> Next thing you know, you wake up on you know, Boxing Day, you don't know what happened after that, you know, nine months, you know, or three months later, you get some pain and you're pregnant. Where did that happen? Where did that happen from? So tell him in a nice way that, look, you know, I, I don't, and the thing is, in my, in my religion, I've been told to stay away from this. So I, I'm sorry, I, I hope you guys have a nice time, you know, in your own time, but I'm not going to join this, you know. But do come to my empire. <laughs> no, no, why not? In, you know, have a nice eat part in your house, you know, bring them and show them, you know, how you have halal chicken, mashallah, not halal turkey. Absolutely. And do it, and do it in a nice way. So anyway, the point is, you're going to go to, to, a, to a place, or think, have your right knee, have the right intention. Next thing is, that you're going to now, you've chosen your career, make sure you've made the right choice for your career. When you made your right choice, what is the right choice, how do you make it? Two things. Istishara, istikhara. Before you start taking your, you know, before you apply to all these courses, istishara, istikhara. You basically consult the people already in those fields. Don't go mashwara to your. If you come to me and you're going to say to me, Imam Saab, shall I go for this course? I'm going to say, what course is it? It's in biochemistry. I'm going to say to you, okay, biochemistry, I don't know anything about it. That's the only thing. I don't know anything about it. Why are you coming to me asking me about biochemistry? Go and ask people in that field, go and ask them what the you know, people who've been there, been, been through it. The people of Ahl, people who are, you're supposed to do mashwara or do proper consultancy, are the people of that field. So go and ask the brothers who've already gone through that. Go and ask the senior person in that course, uh, uh, who's running the course, and then that's one thing done. Second thing is you make istikhara to Allah. Allah, you pay two rakat, see what, Allah, what result Allah gives you. A lot of brothers say to me, I don't see a dream. Don't, don't come back to me and say that, I'm going to send you back, and I'm going to send you back again. You do a good two rakats with devotion. For the sake of Allah, you will have a dream. I've sent a lot of brothers back, I've sent sisters back. I've said, go and do it again, go and do it again. Spend another week. Finally, when they've done it properly with devotion, Allah will show them some guidance, whether it's through a dream or something else. But anyway, that's the second. So now you've chosen your course. You've chosen the actual course. Next thing is, what most brothers and most sisters will do is that they're going to go through this course, right? When first, first is, they've just finished their exams, something like June, end of June. July's here. Most brothers, most sisters, why is it? It's party time, holiday time. It's summertime. Yeah, go out there, waste the time, this and that, play snooker all night, pool all night, go and hang around, you know, whatever it is, go and play these games on the internet, whatever, browse around the internet, blah, 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 whatever. August goes, September goes, 
all the way till October, then the course starts, you have freshers week, all of that. It's like, okay, let it all start, let it all start, and then September comes and it starts. Or, oh, sorry, October comes and it starts. What happens then? They're taking it easy. They're, cruise, they're, they're in cruise control. They think it doesn't matter. So October goes. They've just started the course. November goes. And, you know, some tests, this and that, some coursework is coming by in December, January. Okay, they're starting to now get a bit serious. Next minute they know it. By February, they're in the thick. You know, they go, oh my God, you know, Imam Sir, please make bar for me. Why? I've got six exams. Six courseworks. I've got this. What, didn't they tell you in the beginning? Uh, they kind of did, yeah. <laughs> Well, you had September, you had October, you had November. Come on, guy, be serious. The, be the best thing you can do yourself a favor, Akhi, if you're listening to this, for that coming here, some of you is most is late for you now, it's April, isn't it? You think, oh my God, I wish I listened to it. You know, a few, few months back. But don't worry, next year you can listen, you can do amal on this, inshallah. What you do is, you prepare yourself from day number one. What does that mean? That means, I'll, I'll tell you a good book to get. I've used this book. <clears throat> and I've used it for my own madrasa purpose in my final year and I've, I've, I haven't stuck to it like glue I, I didn't follow it right down to the T but I, I, I made my own methodologies I, I devised my own strategies from by reading this book and it's, it's, a very, it's a very useful book and I think you guys should read it it doesn't matter what you're studying this, this should show you some guidelines of how you should you know, prepare for your exams the first preparation is where it's not in March, my friends, it's in September, it's in August. One of the key things that the Islamic fields they teach you is mutala'a. Then they say muraja'a. Uh, mutala, mudarasa, then muraja'a, three things. They say before you come to the lesson, you must try and read the subject before the teacher even explains it. This is an old Islamic tradition, in all the madaris, even till today, is continuous. You try and work it out yourself, number one. So your mind is working to try and figure this thing out. Doesn't matter how complex it is. Spend two hours, spend three hours on it, try and figure it out. Because what that will do is that it's going to make a very good connection with your mind and the subject that you're studying. Number two is mudarasa. When you're in the actual lesson, the teacher will explain it to you. That time, it's now it's the second time you're going over. What most these universities and colleges, colleges will do, in fact, almost all of them is, you just come in the class and you just listen to the lecturer. You don't do no preparation beforehand. They give you notes. But I know I've been to university myself. Most people don't even read it before they get there. The third thing you do is muraja'a, which means you go over your lecture. So you have a good, good selection group of friends. And I want you to do this. Part of you passing your exam successfully is you have good friends. You know what good friends are? Good friends are serious people. They like to study. They don't want to waste time. They don't basically spend all their time on shadi.com. <laughs> Yeah? And basically browsing around and seeing who's going to be next to take them beloved you know, from, their, from their miseries out and make them you know, a, a nice pie in the sky. They, they, don't, they don't do that. They don't sit around you know, saying, yeah bro, what's up bro? Yeah man, got some, got some exam. Feel like a kebab man. <laughs> Feel like a kebab. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're not time wasters. You go to good friends, they're going to be serious about studying. Okay, you go and study. Now, when you study with them, be serious about studying. Now, divide it. This book, I want to tell you, is, is a book <coughs> by Tony Buzan. B-U-Z-A-N is his surname. You might think, you know, what Sheikh is now quoting a non-Muslim book? Ha, Allahu Akbar. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, he said, Kalima Hikmah. He said, words of wisdom, dalatu mu'min, they are the lost property of a believer. Ya'khuduha min haythu yajiduha. Wherever the believer finds it, he takes it from there. So if you find any non-Muslim with a good theory, it wasn't his, it was yours. <laughs> it wasn't his, it was yours. You're a, you're a mu'min. You take all the best that is in the world, it's yours. Because you believe in Allah, you believe in the one who created that, who gave that man that idea. I'm not saying plagiarism, okay? I'm not saying, you know. <laughs> Uh, guys, please don't go to say, Imam said, you know, Kalima Hikmah Dal, it was my lost property. I found, I found it in the bin and I basically, you know, they all, all those guys threw it in the bin, I took it out and I basically just wrote it, I mean, you know, I copied it, but you know, it's my property, all well, this is mine. I'm Muslim. Yeah. But anyway, what, what you do is, get that book, Tony Buzan's book, you will, you will read that book, and in there what you will find is that he will say that you have to put bite-sized bite-sized memory 
right, memorization throughout every day, every week, every month from the beginning of your studying all the way till the end. Guys, you don't know the power of this because this is actually, honestly, this is Islamic. You know when you do hifz of the Quran, how do you do hifz of the Quran? You don't sit there one day and say, I'm going to take the whole of Alif Lam Mim inside. You don't do that. You start, you say, ذلك الكتاب, ذلك الكتاب, ذلك الكتاب, ذلك الكتاب. And then, and, then, and then you try and move the, you look at, ذلك الكتاب, ذلك الكتاب, ذلك. you look back into, look out again, and then you do the next bit, bite size, bite size. You give yourself breaks. Then what happens is, you, any person who's memorized any surah would know this. You memorize it today, tell me guys, this is true or not. By tomorrow morning, if you memorize a page of the Quran, something brand new, or half a page of the Quran, by tomorrow morning, you've forgotten quite a bit of it. Yes or no? Yes or no, guys, come on. Yes, yes see, this is normal, don't, you know, this is normal human being, that the memory power has got two different modes. This Tony Buzan book, is, uh, he's got many books, okay? Go, go for the one which is Use Your Head. The title of the book is Use Your Head. So in that he'll explain to you about the memory itself. Okay, if he doesn't explain that, he'll explain it in Use Your Memory. He's got a second book called Use Your Memory. But don't, you know, just buy from Amazon, okay? You know, and, and just, just read or borrow it with each other. Don't, don't go around spending so much money in, in um, you know, buying, the, buy, buy, buying all these uh, uh, expensive books. Just, just find it second hand, whatever, just use the information. But Use Your Head should be enough. That was enough for me. So what you do, what you realize is that the memory, if, if today you've memorized something, you would have known it like 100%. By tomorrow morning, it will drop down to 25% or 30%, which means 25-30% now has possibly gone to your long-term memory, is going towards your long-term memory, and the 100%, the, the other 75% you had yesterday was in your short-term memory. So you've got to take it from your sh short-term memory to your long-term memory. Same as, you know, what the CD-ROM, CD-RAM, the whole computer, how it Works, yeah? Same the human mind, mind works like that. So what you're going to do, you do hifz of it again. You go over again. You say, So you go over again. Then now you increase the rate of your long-term memory with that passage. The next day you'll find that it will be up to 45% or 50% or 60%. Next day you'll find it will up to 70%, 90 and 100. Each time you take 100, it drops down. 100, it drops down. But the drop will get higher and higher and higher. So basically you, you start off with 25% then you gradually get to 100%. Finally, you don't have to read that passage every single day. What you will do is after a week, after a week you come back to it, you still will know it. But if you leave it for one month, you would have forgotten. If you leave it for two weeks, you'll forget it. So what you do is you make yourself small bite-sized revisions that you go over and over again and again with key information you need to remember. Now what I'm saying to you guys is, if you've got studying maths, if you're studying economics, what you do is from the beginning of the year, every subject that you do, take the keys, key parts out. You can make mind maps, which he talks about, but you don't have to. You can do it all inside here. When I was studying uh, my final year, I had to devise a way of re remembering all the fiqh, fiqh ikhtilafat. I had to remember in wudu, what did Imam uh, Abu, uh, what did Imam Abu Hanifa say? What did Imam Malik say? What did Imam Shafi say? What did Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal say? And what was in Sahih al-Bukhari, Sahih Muslim, this and that. So it was a mammoth task. So I devised the thing in my head. This was my personal one. I, I gave a figure of what I thought was Imam Abu Hanifa in my head. And I made all of them come to this little pond on four different corners. All the four Imams. Imam Abu Hanifa was dressed in green. Imam Malik dressed in red. Imam... Uh, um, Ahmad ibn Hanbal dressed in grey, Imam Shafi dressed in cream. So basically they've all got different colours, so I can identify them, differentiate. And then they're having now, I create a whole story in my head where Imam Abu Hanifa will say, you know, this is far, then the other one will say, no, no, this is, this is not far, then this one will say, okay, this Bismillah, you say, this is Sunnah, and that, that. And, and it's all going on, I make a little video in my head. But once I've made it, I will play that again and again. Play that again and again. You know what kind of, when I say play again and again, what I mean by this is that I'm going to play this, I'm going to play this when I'm walking. I'm, I'm going to walk in, my, my, my eyes are down, I don't need to look at, you know, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, فَاتَّقُوا الدُّنْيَا وَاتَّقُوا النِّسَا He said, beware of the world, beware of these women. Because once you look at women, like, you know, and, and what happens is, subhanAllah, you've just knocked your memory out. 
Seriously, Ibn Nafsi Mamliya, because when Imam Shafi, rahimahullah, he went to his, his Ustad, what did he say? He said, his, he complained of weak memory to his Ustad Waqi, and he said, Shakawtu Waqi Isu Ahibzi. Shakawtu ila Waqi Isu Ahibzi. He said, I went to my Ustad Waqi, and I said, Imam Waqi, my Ustad, said, I am complaining to you about the weakness of my memory. Fa'arshadani ila tarkil ma'asi. He told me that Ra'ush Shafi, he said, uh, you know, Muhammad ibn Idris, he said, you stay away from sin. Stay away from that. Because what is this? This is fa'inna al-ilm. Knowledge is something which is nurun min ilahi. It's a light from Allah Azza wa Jal. Wa nurullahi la yu'ta lil'asi. And Allah's light is not given to a sinner, one who disobeys him. This was the, the, the thing that Imam Shafi got. So I will tell you the weakness of memory is what? Because the biggest thing, guys, the biggest thing that you suffer from in your exams is when you get to the exam hall, okay? Let's be honest with you. You try to cram it in for the last month. Yes? Yep? Oh, you guys didn't take exams before. Yeah? The way I'm talking about, mashallah, you're good guys, yeah? So they try to cram it in. People who don't do this method, they try and cram it in. They try and cram it in, especially the, the days before, the night before. They try and squeeze it in. Like, you know, they're going on a holiday. They've only got two minutes to pack up. And they've got all these things to take. So they stuff it. And they stuff it. And they stuff it. When they go to the airport, the minute, the minute the guy basically just touches the zip, the whole thing pops out like a jack-in-the-box. Right? So the minute you go into the exam hall and you try and remember something, everything just all your all your knowledge is going down your ears. You know, you're thinking, my God, I've lost everything. Right? Why? Because you did not follow the method, which is an old method of trying to take bite-sized revisions. And in this bite-sized revision, what you do? While you're walking, you go over over it. While you're eating, you go over it. Eat. Bismillah, wa barakatillah, you start it, you eat. Your mind should be on the bite-sized revision. And what he teaches you is that 45 minutes is the extent to how long you can concentrate properly. After 45 minutes, he says, go, he, in his book, he says, go and do some exercise. Go and do some physical exercise. In our case, Alhamdulillah, if you're doing that, your niya is, I want to please Allah with a nice, good body. MashaAllah. Yeah? MashaAllah, good, nice, good body. Yeah? Masalman. Yeah? Yeah, guys. That's it. That's it. Yeah? Why not? Allah has given, given us, you know, a nice, good thing that, you know, some people out there are quite scared of. And they've got a reason to be scared of this, you know what I'm saying? Like, Masalman, right? Anyway, you go and do some do weight training, whatever you want to do, okay? They come 15 minutes, he says, and get back. If you're not going to do that, then, akhi, I'll tell you a better thing to do. Go and read some Quran. Go and get some fresh air. Go and read some Quran. Do some dhikr of Allah. Honestly, this will help you long term. If you do constant bite-sized dhikr of Allah during your whole preparation, Allah will send his, send his angels to you. And what kind of things should you recite? I will, I will tell you that in a little while. So you basically have, have gone now, you're eating, you're doing bite-sized revision. And then you, you're, you're walking, you do it. And when you get together with your good friends, the only thing you should talk about is this revision. So set certain times. So 45 minutes, guys, we're not going to talk about anything else except for studying. And after this, we take a break. Okay, take a break, go around, get some fresh air, talk about whatever you want, come back again and do 45 minutes again. Go back again, come back 45 minutes again, yeah? I am telling you, la ilaha illallah, if you keep this pattern every single day, you're on the bus, you do the same thing, your revision is in your mind. And it's all different. Now, by the time it's two months, three months, you've got maps. And I, I, I had to write this. One of the things he says that you write all these, some of these documentations you want, you write it in such a way that is unique to your brain, your mind. And you go over it again and again, you will see that thing. It's like, basically, if I told you to memorize the London tube map, yep, what station comes after what station comes after what station, it's just like that. You make a little map of all your knowledge, and then you start to say, okay, this comes next, that comes next, that comes next, that comes next. If you go over it again and again and again and again, that map will be stuck in your head. That's what the people of the Quran do. If you tell me now any page of the Quran, any page of the Quran, you quote to me any verse of the Quran, I will tell you, inshallah, bismillah, what surah is it in, what juz it is in, what side of the page in my Quran, the South African one that I memorized, I'll tell you what side, what line, what part of it is in. I'll tell you that. Yeah, and all the Hufas, they, they, they gain this. Why? Because they do it over and over and over and over again. Unless you're a Hafiz who basically Tarabi time comes to say, Allahu Akbar, guys, these guys are going to know my mistakes. So I better pick, I better do some Speedy Gonzalez. <laughs> Unless you're one of those Hafiz, right? So you basically do so fast that the guy behind you can't keep up with you. He said, what, what, what did he say? Did he say, Fattakun, what, what did he say? Oh, oh my God, he made oh, did he make another one? Allahu Akbar, la ilaha illallah. Anyway. 
So you do bite testing, if you do it every single day, you do it every single week and your whole month is busy like this, you've got to learn how to say no. Your mom says to you, better. Your cousin getting married in Preston. You have to be honest with your time. You have to be honest. You sometimes you have to say no. Mom, I love you. I love my cousin. <laughs> but I love myself as well. And I'm going to fail this. If I go over there, oh, Chris, come on, man. You're going to go shadi one weekend, football another day, this, that, that. What are you talking about? What's going to happen to you in the exam? You're going to be suck. You're going to be mince me in the, in the actual exam itself. You're going to learn how to say no. Phone calls, this and that, Facebook, Twitter, whatever, Twitter. You know, just get rid of it, my friend. Honestly, you don't need that. You want to revise, just go face to face. Sit down, revise properly, take your breaks. And then 15 minutes, come back again, revise. And then when you go back to your house, you know, when you're sleeping, la la la, you should have that revision going in your mind. Whenever you can. And your breaks will be the dhikr of Allah. Your breaks will be the dhikr of Allah. So when you do that, I'm telling you that he says in that book, and I've, I've done this myself, by the end of the year when others will be trying to cram all their information in their heads in over two months or one month, you know when May comes, my God, now you don't see the guy. He say, hey, zita or hey, you still alive, you dead, you know. What's, what's the matter with you? He says, nah, bro, I wish I never had this phone line, man. I've got to cut him, man. I need the time, I need time. The guy's basically staying two o'clock in the night, Red Bull. <laughs> Red Bull, nice bull time, man. Now the guy basically is lost in all his contacts, this and that. June comes, you know, the guy basically is getting, getting constipation. One minute constipation, one minute diarrhea, he doesn't know where he is. You know what I'm saying? And when he gets to the exam hall, oh my God, boom, 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 boom. He's walking towards the hall and he gets inside there. It's killing him. It's to sit there. What was that? What was that? <coughs> Cheating in the exam, trying to get answers in the exam, passing whatever. Yeah, what are you doing that for? Who are you? Are you pleasing Allah doing all of that? Are you pleasing Allah? Was that your niyyah to do all of this? And now you're pleasing Allah. Allah watch me. I'm a, I'm a good Muslim cheater. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Forgive me a stop with Allah. What are you trying to do? Because you never prepared for it. Now you want to go and play the games. All right? So then what happens when he comes out? You know, he's, he's saying, uh, how did it go, man? So, okay, man, okay. You know, okay. You can tell by his face by the time he's come out of the exam hall whether he's passed or failed. And when the 24th of August comes and his day he wants to get his results, some of them go missing. Some of you don't know where they are. They come late at night. Yeah, and they want, don't want to break the news. They don't know how to break the news. All that, why? Because you never revise at the right time. Tony Buzan says in his book that if you do it, the method he said, and this is an Islamic method, by the end of the year, what will happen to you is you will, you will be in revision time and everyone's revising. You will walk with a head high. You're going to stick to your routine. Your routine was to do it throughout the day. And you get good sleep. Alhamdulillah, you will be able to do that. You walk in the exam hall, you're going to feel like a mini Imam Bukhari. You're going to feel like a mini Imam Bukhari. Yeah, not nowhere near him, but a little, little, little mini Imam Bukhari, right? So you can go into the exam hall and you can basically, you'll have you all in there. You'll have you all in there. All those things you put, the maths you put, the formulas you put, you've gone over it so many times, it's become second nature. You just bring it up like that. The English words, this and that, the IT, some certain terminologies, the science and the list, and the whole the chart, whatever. It'll, the whole chart you'll be able to memorize. It'll be all inside there. PH, this, that, yeah, CH, yeah, 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 yeah. Back of your hand, you'll just finish it off. I'm telling you, you'll do that. And be thinking like you will come out with a good grade. You will come out with a good grade. Now, before you do this, my, my brothers and my sisters, you must remember that you're, please remember, this is really important. You're going for this exam, and I know many of you are prepare, preparing for your exams right now. Please don't forget, your brain cannot do anything for you. Your memory power cannot do anything for you. Your time you sat cannot do anything for you. Nothing, not even your skills of writing, not even your preparation, not even all the books you studied, not even all the time you put in, nothing can help you. You must make sure that you humble yourself in front of Allah Azza wa Jal. And I, I understand brothers and sisters, many of you might not even do this. You know all this bite-sized revision, I said many of you might not do this. But what do you do? You put your trust in Allah. Doesn't matter who you are, you put your trust in Allah. You don't put your trust. See, tawakkul is not in the means. Please remember this. The means 
your pen, your writing, your computer writing skills, your books, your studying, your memorization, these are all means, your brain is a means. You're going to the class as a means. You do not put your tawakkul, your dependence on your means. You use your means. I'm not telling you to stop the means, okay? I'm not trying to tell you to stop all these means, but you use your means, but you put your trust in Allah Azza wa Jal. When Allah Azza wa Jal will be the one, He will be the one who will pass you. He is the one who is what? He is Fatah. He is the one who opens your, your brain. If you, can't, if you find that your, your brain is not opening, if you find that you're not able to grasp all of this, stop your sinning, stop sinning. And then you say, Ya Fattah, Ya Fattah, Ya Fattah, Ya Fattah, Ya Fattah, Ya Fattah. Oh, great opener. Oh, great opener. Oh, great opener. Oh, great opener. If you want to add to this, this is one of Allah's names. Because Allah has said, وَلِلَّهِ الْأَسْمَاعُ الْحُسْنَى فَدْعُوا بِهَا These are my beautiful names. Call me through these names. So the name that you find most appropriate to this thing that you're trying to do, then ask Allah. If you want to keep it in your memory, you say, Ya Hafiz, Ya Hafiz, Ya Hafiz, Ya Hafiz. You know, great protector. The great protector is who Allah Azza wa Jalla. Protect this in my mind. Keep it inside here. You want to get, you know, you, you, you want to have you know, your, your, your heart opening, 20, 20, uh, the uh, 20th surah, surah Taha. 20th surah, surah Taha. Rabbi, ishrah li sadri, wa yassir li amri, wa hlul uqdatan min lisani, yafqahu qawli. And make sure you say this before the actual exam several times. The days of the exam several, several times. What do you mean by this? Rabbi, oh my Lord, ishrah li, oh Rabbi, ishrah li. Open my, open my, chest to this knowledge where silly amri make this task for me easy untie the knot that is in my tongue or in myself so that they can actually understand what i'm expressing in my exams they can understand that's what you should have in your mind if you find that you gain stressed out what you do is for stress allahumma لا سهلة إلا ما جعلته سهلة وأنت تز وأنت تجعل الحزن كله سهلا إذا شئت لا إله إلا الله الحليم الكريم اللهم أو الله there is nothing easy except when you make it easy except when you make it easy وأنت تجعل الحزن all this grief of God stress of God myself you are the one that will remove this from myself. You'll make it easy for me to bear. And you repeat that. If you want to bring calm to yourself, you want peace in your mind, send salawat on the Prophet Send salawat on him. In fact, you know in your actual exam itself, when you sit in your exam and you've forgotten something, the best thing for you to remember what you've forgotten is, you sincerely send salutations on Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Allah will make you remember what you've just forgotten. I've tried this many times. I've tried this many times. At the moment when you desperately need to remember something that you cannot remember, you say, "Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina wa ala Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa barik wa sallim." Whichever one you want to say, the many salawat, and Allah azza wa jal will, will bring it because what happens is what. You send salawat, there you are in the exam hall, you're sending salawat on the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The angels take it straight away and Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam then replies to that and angels come back with 10 mercies to you. 10 mercies to you, they come back. So that will open you, I'm telling you, try this, try it, it will open things for you. If you need, honestly, before you go to the exam hall, before you go in there, I want you to read two rakats, Salatul Haja, every morning. Don't, you know, last minute people are thinking, oh my God, that book, oh my God, look at that, look at that, look at this, look at that. Forget it. Enough is enough. Stand on the musalla. Five minutes, six minutes, two nice rakats. But don't just do this just for the exams, yeah? <laughs> I know some brothers, yeah, they, they comes, the driving test comes. So, mashallah, the guy in the morning, two rakats, salatul haja. Oh Allah. Allah, Allah. It's like the guy's gonna basically fly in his car today. And then basically he goes and he gives sadaqah in the box in the masjid before he goes. Imam sir, please make dua for me. Yeah? Goes and he goes and he passes. When he's passed his test, 
The guy is not there for Zohar, for Asr, for Maghrib, for Isha. <laughs> Fajr is sleeping and he's thinking, man, when my Ferrari coming, you know. That's what he's doing. Don't do that. Don't play games with Allah. Allah knows all those things. Okay, so you better make sure that all your salahs have been done. And then it, on top of that, as a bonus, you do two rakats, salatul hajjah. And you make, this is sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Anytime Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa had some matter that he was, he was uh, you know, worried about, he straight away used to go into musalla and pay two rakats. And this is known as salatul hajjah. Salatul hajjah is salah of a need. And you stand there and you make two rakats and you raise your hands and say, Oh Allah, oh Allah. You're the only one that can pass me. You know when you say these words to Allah, Oh Allah, you say to Allah in your, in your, in your dua, you say, Oh Allah, I cannot pass this exam. No matter how much preparation I've got, unless you help me, Oh Allah, the one who loves without a reason to love. The one who loves without a reason to love. Oh Allah, you brought me this far. Don't fail me right now. You say what? Allahumma malik al-mulk. Oh Allah, that you own everything. All these exam hall, all these examiners, all you own all of them. You own the papers, all of them. Tutil mulka mantasha. You give whoever you want your dominion. You take it away from whoever you want. Tu'izzu mantasha. You can dignify me today and lift me up. Tu'zillu mantasha. You can disgrace me today. It's all in your hands. And I put my trust in you. Tawak, you say what? One good dua to say. Especially for brothers and sisters who think they've had it, all right? If you think all has gone hell loose, you think, that's it, I'm failing this exam. You know some guys, yeah? They don't, they don't do anything all year round or whatever, you know, and the shaitan then comes, yeah? And shaitan's basically making chocolate cake in their heart. He's saying, hey listen, brother, you are failing this test. <laughs> you know it. <laughs> don't lie. You are failing. So what are you going to do? Stupid. <laughs> what are you going to do? You're going to cry, you're going to move around and run away. What are you going to do? Your father's going to say, and they can't, you know, Shaitan puts a lot of waswas in the heart and he's killing them. He's killing them. Oh my God. What do you do? What do, you do? What do, you do? And the only way he gets him, now some guys going through the exam, the only way he gets him says, hey, listen, I'll tell you one thing. You will find a relief in YouTube. YouTube, please click on there. Shadi.com. Click, click. Watch it all. Oh, and he tells them, go, go over there and do whatever they want. You'll find relief with your friends. Go outside, Saturday night, enjoy yourself, come back, don't worry about it. Have a nice bath. He tells them all these things to find relief, but they don't. They don't. The only thing you can find relief is what? In the dhikr of Allah. Allah bi dhikrillahi Your whole heart is unsettled. You think you're going to fail this exam? The only way, my brother and sister, is what? Hasbunallahu wa ni'mal wakeel. Ni'mal mawla wa ni'mal nasir Hasbun Allah wa ni'mal wakil Ni'mal mawla wa ni'mal nasir Hasbun Allah wa ni'mal wakil Ni'mal mawla wa ni'mal nasir Hasbun Allah, what does it mean? Hasbun Allah, only Allah is enough for me now. Wa ni'mal wakil, the best of those who I can depend upon. Ni'mal mawla, the best of masters, the best of guardians. Wa ni'mal nasir, the best of helpers. You think Allah's not going to help you when you say these words? You try and test it out. Test it out, brother, sister. With iman, test it out. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, when Ibrahim alayhi salam was in the fire, when they dropped him in the fire, you know how big this, you know how big this fire was? The whole city brought all the different firewood they could. They made the, they were going to make the biggest bonfire they could. And they catapulted him right in, in, inside there. They weren't able to put him, because if you, stepped, if you stepped on there, you'd fall straight into the firewood. So they catapulted him inside there. And when he was catapulted in there, and he stood there, and, you know, Jibreel came to him. So Jibreel, alayhi salam, came and he said, Ibrahim, are you not going to call Allah? One of the things, tradition in, in, in Bukhari, Sahil Bukhari, is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, the first thing that Ibrahim, alayhi salam, said when he was thrown into the fire is, Hasbun Allah wa ni'mal wakil. Allah is enough for me. Allah is enough for me. That's it. When the Sahaba, after the day of, after the battle of Uhud, when they lost, and people came to them, and they were in their wounds, fresh in their wounds, and they had lost, 
a miserable loss in the battle of Uhud. And people said to them, Inna qad jama'u lakum People are getting ready to attack you again. Have fear. They said what? This fazadahum iman, the iman increased, and they said, Hasbun Allah wa al wakil. Allah is enough for us, and the best, best of those that we can depend upon is Allah. Best of the of the all the beings that we can depend is the being of who, who's that being? It is Allah Azza wa Jal. So if all goes loose, what you do is you sit on the musalla, be very sincere with Allah, and you make this dua to Allah again and again, and you cry to Allah, and you be sincere in what you say that our Allah, you are enough. Rasulullah said what? He said the treasures of one of the treasures of Jannah is What is that? That nothing can give me, that can avert me from, from any evil. Nothing has the power to give me good except for you, O Allah. Put your full trust in Allah. Go into the exam hall after you've done your two rakats. And then you sit down there, you put your trust in Allah. Allah, will, the Fatah, will open your mind and He will give you things in that exam that you will be surprised. I've been in certain exams that you know when, when you try to re revise or whatever and it's gone all, all messed up. And then you, you put your trust in Allah, Allah will help you. Even Allah will help you. So anyway, one important thing is, when you have finished that exam paper, don't start gossiping outside of the exam hall. What did you write for that? What did you write for that? What did you write for that? Because the moment you're going to hear you've done something wrong, it's going to eat in your mind. Psychologically, it will affect you. A lot of brothers, sisters, they do this and think, oh, my God. oh no, don't do that. Just say, look, I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. I want to prepare for the next test, next exam. Why? Because, subhanAllah, no one's seen what your test paper is like. You know the best thing you can do now? You go back to the musalla again. You sit down. You say, oh Allah, whoever's going to mark my exam, his heart is in your hands. Mm. Oh Allah, you know I love you. And I'm going to do, you know, tell Allah. Allah will keep a fast for you. Allah will give sadaqah. Allah will do that. Do it. Don't, don't be dishonest. Do it. Do your nafal rakat. Do your nafal. Oh Allah, please turn his heart. Make him see good in my paper. Nothing wrong with it. If Allah does it for you, it's Allah's mercy. It's not cheating. It's not cheating. The best thing you can do, go back to him and say, oh Allah, I've done this many times. I've done this myself many times. Oh Allah, he's, let him have a good, when he, when he marks my paper, make sure it's a good day. He's feeling happy. <laughs> And make sure that he sees the things that will give me good marks and oh Allah, please forgive me for my mistakes, but let him overlook my other things or let him not see that in the light that he will give me bad marks. So make that dua and carry on making it till the day of your time comes when you get your results. But on top of all of that, I want to say one important thing, brothers. Don't forget. This is probably the most important thing I'm going to say to you, which is, a brother asked me just today, he said, make dua for me, man. I've got, I've got this, this exam ahead of me. And I said, okay, inshallah, I'll make dua. But don't forget your real exam. Don't forget your real exam. Brothers who are listening to this, sisters who are listening to this, whether you've got an exam this year, you haven't got one. We are all in an exam hall right now. We're all in this hall. Who's, mark, who's, who's writing things down? The angels. They're writing things down. We're all going to a day when all our results are going to be shown. That is Yawm Al-Qiyamah. And the one who's going to give our result, either in our right hand or in our left hand, is going to be Allah Azza wa Jal. And the angels will bring it to us. So don't forget, above all, the real exam that you've got. Because this exam in this world, my brother, you fail it, you can come back and say, So what? We're looking at, we're looking at, I failed, so what? So what, man? They can do that. You can say, I'm going to take it again. Okay, Dad, please, please, I'll buy another car. You know, I'll be good to you. Whatever, you know, bang, 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 you, whatever. You, know, you, you can retake it. Take it. You can convince them. You can say, please, I'm mucked up, I messed up, please, forgive me. You can do that. You can retake your exam. Who is going to come back from Yawmul Qiyam and take their test again? Come on. No one. Don't forget that, brothers. No, there's no retake of this real test you said. There's no retake. The only thing you can do, you know, sometimes you write something in the exam and you want to cross it out. You know, sometimes you do that, you want to cross it out, yeah? 
You want to cross something out in your life? Just do Salatul Tawbah. Just say to Allah, Allah Tawbah for that thing I just did not now. And the angels wrote it. <laughs> they, they, please, Allah, I've crossed it out with Salatul Tawbah. Please, I won't do it again. Please. Be sincere. That's how you cross it out. And you get onto the Day of Judgment. And then you find out the real results. So please don't forget this. Okay, so this is what I've said to you brothers. You will, inshallah, be in Allah. Remember me in your du'as. I make du'a now. Let's make quick du'a for all the brothers who are taking the exams. And the sisters. Yep. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina wa Mawlana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa barik wa sallim. Allahumma anta rabbuna la ilaha illa ant wahdaka la sharika laka al-hannan al-mannan Badi'u samawati wal-ardi ya dhal jalal wal-ikram ya hayu ya qayyum bi rahmatika nastaghis Oh Allah, all the brothers, all the sisters who are going to sit the exams Oh Allah, all those who are listening to this O oh Allah, open their minds, open their hearts. O oh Allah, give them your ita'ah and your obedience. O oh Allah, let them stay away from your disobedience. O oh Allah, open their brains so that they can memorize and keep it in their memory. O oh Allah, let them sit for their papers. And O oh Allah, let them do it for your sake. And O oh Allah, you be there to help them. O oh Allah, la nasira illallah. We have no other help except for you, O oh Allah. We have no one else that we can take us through this except for you. So Allah, in you we put our trust. And you are the only one that can pass us. And you are the only one that will give us a good, good life in this world. And we hope, O oh Allah, that you will give us a good life in the next world. And O oh Allah, pass all of us in the exam of the next life. Wassalamu ta'ala ala khayri khalqihi Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Ameen. Rahmatika ya rahman rahim.